Hi, this is a video kind of introducing um, the particle nature of light and we're going to also talk about the hydrogen emission spectrum. So we learned in a previous lesson that light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum and that it is a wave. Um, and we know like the differences between the waves. Um, this isn't a very good image because it doesn't show the differences in their frequencies and wavelengths, but we know the colors of the of the rainbow um, and think of them as waves with um, red being the largest wavelength and smallest frequency and then the violet would be the smallest wavelength and the largest frequency. But in the early 1900s there were some um, experiments that were kind of hard to, they were really impossible to explain if you think of, of light as only being a wave. Those two experiments are the photoelectric effect and the fact that we can see um, bright line emission spectra. So all, um, not just visible light, but all um, electromagnetic radiation has this dual property. Um, so we can, depending on the way we're trying to understand and explain things, we can think of light as a wave or any electromagnetic uh, radiation like a radio wave or is it a radio um, made up of particles which we call photons. Which leads me to this. So the photon is when you're thinking of the electromagnetic wave as being made up of particles, it is the particle. Um, it has, um, it's weird because it's a particle but it has no mass. Um, and it carries a quantum or just a little piece of energy and it can be different amounts of energy that quantum can be um, and we'll learn how we can calculate with that. So um, my drawing is kind of silly but this um, so kind of helps some people to understand it. The little smiling guy is our photon and then the photon can carry a certain amount of energy um, and that little bundle of energy is called a quantum, whoops, can't spell, a quantum or a quanta of energy. So I talked about the two experiments that they were not able to explain using only the, the wave, mod, wave theory of light, and one of them is the photoelectric effect. This is um, where if you shine light with a specific frequency, which means it then has a specific amount of energy, you can get the electrons of the metal you're shining the light on to become it to be emitted. So, um, but only certain colors of light will cause the electrons to essentially start flowing um, or moving out of the metal. Um, and what I'm trying to show you here is like if we thought of light as a wave, we would expect that every color would cause these electrons to get ejected from the metal. But in reality, there's like a threshold frequency. It depends on the metal what that frequency is. It's usually in the greens um, where those um, particles of color have enough um, energy to actually dislodge the electron. So it's almost like you're throwing, you know, some kind of a ball. And if you have a big enough ball, you can get it to, you know, part of the metal, which is just the electrons will come off. So these are representing the photons. So you can see like a photon of red is going to have less energy because it has a, and you don't know this equation yet, but the energy of a photon equals Planck's constant, which I'll show you later what that is, times the frequency. So the these are directly proportional. The frequency of the color, um, as that goes up, the energy of the photon goes up. So the blue photons here have more energy and therefore they're able to emit um, electrons. So if we thought of light as just being a wave, we would expect every color and wavelength to emit the electrons. Um, this is just a little bit more and also a different image. So photons, remember those are those particles of electromagnetic radiation. Some of them have enough energy and they can make those electrons eject. Um, the second experiment, there's actually at least one more, but these are the ones I'm going to cover. 
The second reason why we now know that light can behave, um, it, it is made up of particles and it's also a wave, but um, the bright line emission spectrum. Um, if I look at light through a spectroscope or even, um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. You know, when you see a rainbow um, or you see a drop of water in the light or, or like a diamond, the light will kind of break apart, like white light will break apart into what we call a continuous spectrum, which is the bottom image down here. The continuous spectrum has all of the wavelengths of all the possible colors. But when we shine, or not, now we're not shining, we're, we would take like hydrogen and put it into a tube and electrocute it essentially so send an electric current through it and look through what we call a spectroscope which is kind of like a piece of cut glass that allows you to see the colors you don't see all the colors you only see these bright lines and this is like a fingerprint each element has its own set of these specific bright lines um, and this is uh, also evidence that the light is made up of particles um, and it's being produced by the electrons in an atom. So I'm going to keep going with this. So the energy levels in an atom are quantized. So the electrons can only be, let me move it so you can see. So if we look at, you know, just these little circles. So we're looking at the model of the atom being like a Bohr model right now, just because it's easier and the electrons have to be in these energy levels. It's kind of like the rungs of a ladder. If you're climbing a ladder, you have to be on this rung or this rung. You can't just be suspended in between. So because of that, you know, an electron is moving from one energy level to another almost instantaneously. If we thought of light as just being a wave, then we would expect there to be every possibility of color produced um, and we would expect again to see the continuous spectrum. And I'll keep explaining this because I know it probably doesn't make total sense yet. So whenever, um, and I'm going to go over what an excited atom is, but it for a real element, these colors are representing the electron transitions of that particular element and the amount of energy that they're giving off. Um, and those are fixed amounts of energy, which is part of our um, quantum um, theory and quantum mechanical model eventually of the atom. But let's just go over a couple of these terms and then I'll show it to you another way and I'm going to draw it. So absorption and emission. So we, <clears throat> you know, an electron that's close to the positive nucleus, because remember it's attracted, um, this electron here is nice and close, but if I um, take a photon, which we're going to think of that as a particle of energy, but it corresponds to a certain frequency, so maybe this is a red photon, the electron absorbs that photon of energy, the dot is the electron, and then it will move to a higher energy level. So absorption is that absorption of the photon or the piece of, of energy causes the electron to move away from the nucleus. <clears throat> Whenever possible, then the electron is attracted to the nucleus, so it will return back, and it's really going to give back that photon. Um, but the photon, we can then see sometimes, not always, we can see the photon giving off a certain amount of color energy, so we can see a certain frequency of light. This is what's going on um, with that emission spectrum, and I'm going to tie it back to that in a second. Also, just terminology-wise, ground state and excited state. So when the electron is as close as possible to the nucleus, we call that ground state. Sometimes people call that relaxed. Um, and then um, excited state is when the electron absorbs the photon. So here's another way of showing a photon. Uh, I'm going to um, show our photons with sizes so like a red photon with a red kind of wave that it's going to emit um, versus a violet photon is going to be more energetic with a higher frequency color that it's going to then emit but excited is when that electron is away from the nucleus um, after it's undergone that absorption of the photon
So back to the hydrogen emission spectrum, and this is directly related to the Pogel that we do. The transitions are quantized, which tells us that the atoms' energy levels are quantized. Um, so we remember that if we number our levels, one, two, three, four, five, and then make another six, if the electron is moving from n equals three to two, then that is um, going to give us that red color. And then if it's going from n equals six to two, that's a bigger energy difference, then we'll get the violet. Um, and then we have the other two colors. Um, this would be n equals five to two and n equals four to two. So I want you to be able to draw this um, on the exam and also on an assignment, a lab assignment, kind of an activity. So let's just show maybe two of these transitions that are going on. So I'm going to make this a little bigger. Let's say I have an electron sitting at um, n equals 2. And it's going to absorb a violet photon. So it's going to absorb a pretty energetic piece of electromagnetic radiation. That's going to then cause that electron to become excited. It's absorbing energy. And it's going to end up out on a higher energy level. It's going to become excited. So this is the absorption process. And it had to absorb the photon for it to move away from the nucleus. Then the electron is going to want to return back closer to the nucleus. And that would be what we call the emission process. And it's going to give back that same amount of energy that it absorbed from the photon, but it might be a color that we can see. Um, so it might be, and we'll draw it as a color wave. So notice my violet wave there has, I should get myself out of the way, should I put myself down there maybe? Um, the violet wave has a high frequency, a smaller wavelength, versus, let's do the same drawing for red. Um, <clears throat> So if I have another electron, it, and why you see all these colors is it's many different um, hydrogens, which each have one electron, so they can do these transitions. A lot of them are doing the red transition. Now we're, you know, and a lot of them are doing the violet transition, so you're able to see those bright lines. But let me show you. So if I was that electron <clears throat> at, at n equals 2, or the second energy level, now we've got a red photon, so a little less energy, bigger wavelength. Um, the electron will absorb that energy, um, and it's going to undergo that absorption process, and it's only going to go from 2 to 3 this time. It'll move out here for a second, then it'll come back and undergo emission. And when it does the emission, it's going to give me a longer wavelength color that sometimes we can see as humans. So the colors that are on the spectrum are colors we can see. There are other transitions that happen that we are not able to see, that other like insects and animals can possibly see. But these are the four that humans can see. So there are other transitions happening where that wave coming out is not part of the visible spectrum. So I think I've mentioned this already, the, the um, atom itself is quantized, which means it's found um, in energy, discrete energy levels where the electrons have to be found. And then a quantum is just a minimal amount of energy that can be lost or gained by an atom. And we are going to be able to calculate the energy of the photon um, using the equation energy equals h times frequency or nu. Um, the next video will cover that.